All right, we are officially live on Instagram and we have our little Zoom recording up as well. <clears throat> and I have the second legend here who completed Hell Weekend recently. So this is the lovely Joshua Lees, or if you're finding him on social, it's Josh Lees 76, I believe. Or have I got uh, that wrong? Jo Josh Lees 91. Josh, yeah. Numbers all over the place. <laughs> just telling him your you're, password. You're thinking way. <laughs> Yes, I am. Um, so would you just like to start with introducing what Hell Weekend was defined in your head as when we when we initially oh, went into yeah. it? You know um, what I mean? Yeah, initially, like, it was just after we watched Dave Goggins and um, <clears throat> just had this really, I guess, you know, desire to push ourselves, push ourselves hard. And the idea behind it was like push ourselves so hard past what we thought we could possibly push ourselves to know that we can go that level. And knowing that we can go that level then turns into like, well, if I can do that, I can do anything. So, um, and then, you know, leading up to it was a lot of watching um, YouTube on Hell Week and just getting the mind prep for, you know, not only getting the mind prep, but also getting an understanding of what we need to set ourselves up for. And although it was nowhere near as bad as Hell Week, it actually would be. And I honestly think, you know, in the state I was in for that time period, I would not have passed Hell Week. Um, but at the same time, when you're in a different situation and a different group environment and you just get told to do something and you do it, you generally just do it. Totally. So, you know, I still think I have the mental strength to do something like that. We'll see when you're in it. <clears throat> How about it? Um, so I know that you were the one who we all looked to as the one who kind of instigated it. I know there was that impulse of us watching it with the suggestion of Tom and then that creative idea was like, we need to do it. And I would just love to go through the mental process of when you decided that it was a thing and making that decision and how the rest of the week kind of like what what mind games went went through with that leading up to the actual event because I know that in the moment you're almost like let's do it now and I'm yeah. very much like you and I know you're so headstrong that once you've made a decision that it's like it is it's yeah happy. yeah so yeah exactly in the moment it's like I'm, I'm a very big one you know from learning from Jim Rohn and stuff it's like if you let an idea slip even a day, even a couple of hours and the desire to actually do it starts to dwindle. So it's like, let's do it. And I don't kind of know what day, it might have been the weekend. It's like, we couldn't do it right now. And even though I was like, let's do it now, I'm pretty sure I started with a four by four by 48 mm -hmm. um, challenge. I and I, I said, let's start it now because I thought we could start now. So nobody else was really interested. <laughs> um, We're like, yes, Josh. Yeah. Keep going. And to be honest, I would have. I, <laughs> I know. You had um, that look in your eye. But then, you know, that turned into Hell Weekend and then we planned it. It's like, it was, was going to be July and I didn't want to leave. Yeah. Um, so it's like, let's, you know, we worked out we could do it. Um, and then leading up to it, I was keen. I was keen and I was always keen. The keenness never changed, but I think a little bit of nerves kicked in the day and the, like two days in the day, like leading up to it. Mm. And um, those nerves were like, you know what, I can really not do this. You know, I could really choose to just not do this. But then in my head, it's just like, you know, regret outweighs the pain. Yeah. And it got to a point where it's like, we're doing this regardless. We're going to do it. And then I guess once I kind of resolved that in my head, like I already had, but it's just like that. I call it the, you know, the bitch in me. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch in me was coming out. And it's just like, that's what I wanted get rid of completely and this that helped a lot yeah but um yeah then we just decided like you know let's do it for more than just us and that was when we kind of decided to make it a full live event and make it a fundraiser as well yeah and you know you're doing it for more than you then and you know you're always doing more for others than you will for yourself 100 percent. and just as a side note before we um delve into a few more questions here um uh, we teamed up with Young Veterans Australia and actually ended up um, getting $1,500 in charity. And so like, that's a really cool thing of 
you know, that helped push the boys and propel them forward. And like, also there was the interaction of people joining in on our lives. And, you know, every time they'd come in, it's like these lives have not stopped, um, which was a really, really cool part of the event. But if we just track back, so we've gone from that beginning phase of there was the impulse of decision to actually do the event, the build up and lead up to the event. And then we actually got to Friday morning, getting everything ready. Um, and I know that you, you were busy doing all of the scheduling and stuff beforehand, but what was, because you did put the schedule together, do you feel like you'd rather not have done that moving into your 9am Friday morning start? I feel like it would have been a lot easier to like, in the sense of actual hell week, you know, you've got a number of instructors and a lot of instructors, and, you know, it's so easy to be told to do something and just do it. Whereas I kind of knew what I was doing, what I was doing. And then me being me, I made it, you know, impossible, <laughs> like absolutely impossible. And I'm just like, oh, we can do this. And then two hours in, I'm, I'm hating myself. And then I'm most like nearly in tears from you guys absolutely railing us. Oh, well, um, we've got Matthew. Ke oh, we had Matthew Keen on. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and that cool. reminds me, guys. Um, I was chatting to Matthew, who um, is, you know, one of the head volunteers. I believe he's the, you know, the volunteer in charge of Young Veterans Australia, and um, he was super grateful for all the donations and super yes. grateful that we did it. But at the end of the day, um, the, the community matters as much as the money. So, 100%. so go join the community and um, give back that way as well. Yeah. And that's just Young Veterans Australia uh, or Young Veterans and Facebook pages and stuff. So Yeah, and you'll find in our, um, in our like, what we follow or if you need to get in contact with us, we can lead you in the direction if you want to follow or even look at Hell Weekend because that's on our Facebook and all of the recordings are there and open to the public. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I really, I really love what you were saying there about, you know, it is almost easier in a sense of, of turning up and taking orders but then there's like what I was going through with Tom in our interview is that there were moments within Hell Weekend that I think became too rhythmical which was like you were knowing you were getting that your 6.4k runs and this was a moment of reprieve even though it wasn't physical reprieve it was like okay I can count on that I can start to map things out with times and yeah. roughly blah 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 so it's like I I wonder what your opinions on that were. And like, personally, I think we stopped giving, uh, we stopped taking the control from you and kind of gave a little bit of that back. And I would have been really interested to see how you responded. Yeah, I think, um, especially from the research I did on like the whole Hell Week thing as well, um, the meal breaks every six hours, yeah. that is a, a must obviously energy wise yeah but um you know it is a morale booster it's yeah like a one hour to meal like you yeah. get to you get to get to that point and it's like you get there and it's like oh just rest for a bit <laughs> but the six by sorry the four by four by 48 gave a good structure sure um and to be honest without that structure you have so much more time to fill yeah and and even with the four by four by 48 initially it was it was the reprieve yeah. But by the end of it, my feet were in like 11 out of 10 pain. Every single step hurt. And you felt, you know, eight kilometers of those 6.4 kilometers. You know what yeah, I mean? Like it, I you, felt, you felt much more than I could it. see it. <laughs> and um, we ended up doing, it was about 1.1 kilometer strips. So we ended up doing more than 6.4, which is a little bit more than four miles, about 4.2 miles each time. Yeah. But you get to that end part and you just, you're like, I can't. My feet just, I don't know, you remember seeing my feet. They were like bruised and swollen like this. And that really? was just from walking. And and um, I thought I broke my foot, like it hurt that much. But then after 16 hours worth of sleep afterwards, it was like much better. But the, the 4x4 by 48 ended up being the really, really, really hard part at the end. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting perspective because I, like, you know, on, on that, perspective of like certainty and stuff and structure it's um yeah just a different perspective from your eyes so I, I appreciate mm. that um can you talk to the fact of like walking into this event with a very strong mental game 
and I would consider you fairly physically fit. Mm. And what went initially and how did your, like, how did you respond to the dynamic shift between body breakdown and yeah. where your mind went? Well, um, I, I consider myself, you know, like just naturally fit in a sense. But I will say I did zero training coming up to this. Like leading up to it, I did zero training. I went for one four kilometer run in the two weeks leading up to it. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, my body went really quickly. But I know that, and I'm, I'm a big believer, the body, uh, the mind will always go before the body. Yeah. And knowing that in my head, like I do feel like I have a pretty strong mental game. Um, I kept going regardless and even though like you know my feet were shot they were absolutely shot every time you stop for 10 seconds and get back up and your whole body just like no mm -hmm. this is like go and then you know you start going and it gets a little bit easier um i don't know i just i just knew i could do it and you know like even if it was 48 hours even if it even if they like i remember saying this to you and tom at the end like even if you threw a 24-hour extension literally in the last minute like just, just keep going. Just keep going. Because <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's a story you tell yourself. And initially it was the story of like, this is easy, even though it was grueling hard when you guys were absolutely flogging us on that first day. Um, you know, there's words to yourself actually make a difference. Yeah. And if you sit there going, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, it's going to make time take three times as long. Whereas if you're just like, this will be over in a bit, this is awesome. I like, can just keep, make a joke out of it, essentially. Like, it's like the story you tell yourself is what's real. 100%. With um, oh, so many questions in there of like what I want to ask you because I, I want to see if you could break down the 48 hours into three steps essentially of what you went through. Yeah. Mentally, physically, just wrapping um, it all up. Um, there's a clear step of where the the physical, the really hard physical stuff. I know we had that bit of a, a shift from you guys were absolutely like in the water, right now, crawling and back crawling. And then, and then we had that one break and it's just like, it went from physical absolute smashing to maintain. Mm. That was probably that first step. And that, that to me made me realize like the plan that I had originally written up for you guys. And I just said, look, be dynamic about it. Um, it was not achievable. Like there was no way we were sitting in the water for three hours straight. <laughs> I, I literally wrote like three hours in the water. We did. We, we did about. To a point where I was oh, like, they're literally gonna die. Like, we I did. Don't think we can do that. We did like four minutes in the waves, and like it was windy, and the wind sucks. Like you could do it in the water, but the wind is a killer. But we were sitting there chattering away, like, oh, oh. Um, and and that was like after two or three minutes. I will admit to, and I'll get back to your question. Yeah, yeah, um, we're good. With the mind stuff, um, I was freezing in that water. And I just remember like shivering like crazy. And then I was like, no, stop. And I just remember breathing and it's just like, and my whole body just stopped shivering for that. Like probably it was about four or five seconds. And I'm like, you know, training that stuff, that is, that is the mind strength right there. Yes. To be able to step out of the pain and just, I guess, meditate on it. Um, so that was, you know, that little level ups that you get out of, pushing yourself so hard it's like somebody could look at it and go that was really stupid what you did and you know in some eyes it could be but at the end of the day the mental level ups like and just I don't know personally from for me and I was when I was walking I was doing those crappy walks and I'm, oh I'm pain but I just take away from the pain and I start putting my head and I just do what I do in meditation I visualize what I'm achieving not not that physical moment but what I'm achieving you know, and for me, it's like that. Those big financial goals that we've got, and what that's going to create for us, what we can do for our family, what we can do for our friends, the lifestyle we'll get to actually live. And I just live that while I was walking. And then next thing you know, you've just done another four hundred meters without noticing. So it's like short circuiting. In so in these minute minute um, intervals, what like you're saying, some people could say that's silly. Four to five seconds over forty five. Of 48 hours 
given the opportunity to step into that meditative state or to go, I have the opportunity to, to think differently here. Yes, while it might not last for 10 seconds even, it's short-circuiting the pain response. So if we just get back to the first question and then we'll move Sorry, into yeah. another one. That's okay. So we started with, no, all yeah. good. So the, the body breakdown essentially was the first step for you of like feeling that real physical shift. Yeah, um, it was just super hard, like super hard. And, you know, it got to the point where I think the, the, the shift to mental there was when I, I went, you know what, I don't have to do this quick. I just got to do it. Mm. And, and that was, I don't know, it just kind of brought me back to like, I, I feel sometimes you feel like you have to do things a certain way. It's just like, no, make, if, if it hurts, just change the way you do it so it hurts somewhere else, you know? like. <laughs> Um, I love that. Yeah, so that was a that was I guess that was a bit big physical to mental shift, and then it went to um, it just went to that maintain. It was just like the fatigue was there every time you stopped for ten minutes and got back up, it hurt. Everything was stiff, but it's just like all right, we just push through that. And it's like even though you walk like a robot for a minute, and then you start to loosen up a bit, and then you can keep going. Um, and then I think towards the end, it just moved to exhaustion. Um, physical and mental and like you could feel that brain frog, frog coming in and you know you, you couldn't get out a sentence um, and then the pain of the, the feet pain I think was the biggest one that took over at the end it's just like yeah. push through it so it's not it's not three clear things there but it's definitely like I've got all the physical energy it's like oh I'm starting to really lose that mental kicks in it's like I can keep doing this I'll do this however I need to do it turned into like all right now we're starting to really feel some physical pain yeah. but it's just like push through the pain that's a mental strength to push through the pain um and realistically like injuries could have happened yeah. injuries probably should have happened and i thought they did happen um but after rest it proved that it was just you know the body going like, take a freaking break isn't it interesting though when you think of like creating habits in the in the opposite direction kind of day two or day three is when you start gaining momentum whereas it's like it was that pinnacle of my body needs rejuvenation and rest now yeah um so like when when you're speaking to uh like trying not to give your pain a voice and I know that there was a physical signs like one of the big ones were your feet but then you you know a huge one was like the chafing of your balls and stuff I know that that was like extremely painful and like when Josh was saying he was walking like a robot like his legs were literally externally rotated as he was walking and if you see the footage of it it's like that that in itself is like a, a physical disability in a way like I don't know what that's done to your physical what that did to your physical structure during that time mm. but um I would love for you to just I would love to hear what pain came up for you and whether you actually did let it in or whether it did come in and it was hard to get away at points and when you noticed those times were and if it was like when Sarah and I were around or when it was when you were silent or walking um I think it was just in the really hard parts like it was really crap the, the water the the water boarding of the waves mm, yeah that was really crap and like even though we, you know, you put on a brace, we're putting on a brave face and chatting back and stuff. Like it, was, it was fun at the time. Um, it was crap at the time at the same time. Yeah. But those are the points where it's like, in your brain, you just go, man, this is shit and I just can't wait for it to end. Yeah. But that's where I think the external talking kind of shuts your brain up sometimes. That's where the cheekiness takes away. That's where like going, oh, this is easy. Like just screaming yeah. out. Like it, you can't think this sucks when you're screaming out this is easy you right. can't do it at the same time yeah um and i think when like just when we're trodden you know walking 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 it's just like the feet the feet pain was like it was taking over the mind and that's where it was the moments where it's like you really start to think about the visualization think yeah. about link link the brain to what's exciting coming up and then when you're thinking about that stuff, like you still feel your feet, but you're not concentrating. Yeah. So you, your brain's pretty strong in the sense that you just, you move it, the focus away and you focus on something else. And, you know, it's like the law of attraction thing. And I love that stuff. 
and it's like what you focus on you will achieve what you focus on is life you know perception is reality and if I sit here going oh, my feet are hurt well, yeah they're going to keep hurting I'm going to keep thinking about it if my feet hurt I'm just like man think about the house we're going to have in New Zealand yes. it's just like you can't think about your feet then right yeah. I love that it's kind of like the when you're in a loving state it's like you can't be hateful and it's like when you um yeah it's like you can't be angry. yeah that kind of the spectrum thing and and I love that because it's like the emotions do exist on a spectrum and it's all about perspective and where we choose to tune our little perspective into so so many people can be sitting on that I don't want to say like better or worse higher or lower but like towards an away value I guess um in like a, a more less than I'm using like all opposites of words a less than constructive emotion that you can sit in versus going well how could I respond with gratitude in this moment or how could I respond with seeing this as a lesson and I'm not saying that all moments are fluffy and amazing but like what the boys went through was um incredibly challenging and then to even hear your perspective on that is a real mm. shape shifter just to for me it shows me how much you've grown mentally and and how sure. much you would have grown just in that short period of time like tenfold yeah, and to add to that, like this, I don't know, where your focus goes, like your brain just makes stuff happen with what you're focusing on. Yeah. And it's, it's really is a difference between like a, and I read it like in so many books now, and like you always see it's like the difference between an amazing life and an average life is just what, you can, what you're focusing on. Yeah. You focus on the amazing things. You focus on what you're grateful for. You focus on everything great. And you're happier. You you you're more focused on the good stuff. You don't think about the bad stuff. You don't fill your mind with crap. You don't watch the news every night and fill your mind with shit because you're reading a book or you're you're pushing harder and you're moving forward. And, and that's that creates an extraordinary life. And and things will come to you for for focusing on that. Because when you focus on bad, you're going to receive more bad. If you focus on good, you're going to receive more good. If you focus on bloody killing it, you're going to kill it because eventually your actions will follow what you're focusing on. Your brain will find it. And with that, like, how good was receiving the cookie at the end of all of this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. And that was, that was perfect, like, you know, the cookie jar stuff. And that is, like, yeah. you know, the callousing the brain. That yeah, was, that was, a, that was, that was like doing a thousand pull-ups for the mm. brain. <laughs> I think more. Yeah. But like, what well, you know, I think I said it to you after when you were sitting in the front with me as I was driving, is that something that came over me strongly at the end was that it feels so anticlimactic. And you know, when you do really huge events, mm. it's like we're, we're kind of conditioned or programmed that it's this build up to something, but it's like, yeah, no, we're just going to get coffee and we're literally going to sleep. And yeah, we did that. And you both were like buggered and as were we, but I don't know if it was more of a, like, just, I don't actually know how to feel about yeah. this. Like, what are you, what's your, it, it's what's it just, it's a reminder that don't chase a goal for the point of achieving a goal. Yes. Yes. You know, we, totally. I thought it would have been more, dramatic at the end as well mm. and i remember like you guys like oh, step over this i'm just like i don't really yeah, care like, like, I do it. <laughs> yeah. but um but you know like even though the whole 48 hours was fun it was fun part of it it wasn't fun experience but now i have that experience yeah. and now i can draw on that experience it's like if i'm playing footy and i will get back to footy if i'm playing footy and it's freaking hard and i got somebody made a break and i got 80 meters to chase them down you know, it's in those moments where I'm going to be like, oh, I don't really want to. But then it's like, well, I did that. Mm. And that's way freaking harder. So yeah. get that. It's just like those, you don't have to think about it. Your brain just like, like they said, it's like it's a cookie in the jar. It's like, yeah. you know, pull your finger out and do it. Look what you've done before. You know, you know you can do this. It's like a four-minute mile thing. Nobody could ever break the four-minute mile until one person did. And the next minute, school kids right. are doing it. Like, totally. you've done this and you know this can be done. So do it. Yeah. And then that's oh. just discipline do it <laughs> oh and i could talk to you about discipline all day yeah. um just i feel like we are the same in that area and i think we actually between you sarah tom and i we we really understand how discipline and practice 
is is so critical to freedom in any area of your life and it's like like you said it's less about getting to the point of like oh I achieved that and ticked it off it's actually the progress there and it's progress beyond that moment that's just a that's just a checkpoint it's like oh cool like yeah that of course that was going to happen but um don't get lost too much in the moment of a huge accomplishment but also like give yourself time to acknowledge what you went through but then it's like okay so mm. not like not always going what's the next thing but it's like okay if that happened cool how can I now build on it how can I give back more yeah. um what's going to be the next thing that breaks me to my next little checkpoint here to keep progressing through life and I yeah I just want to say how how proud I am of you and how amazing it was to watch you in a different environment yet again because we've all gone through so much together and that was like a you know it was another level because you and Tom responded quite differently in moments and yeah um yeah, yeah it was, it cool. was a good bonding to me and Tom as well like I remember I will say like at the start I was more of like oh, we got this and he yeah. was a little bit like oh man you know, like we got this and then yeah. toward the end my brain was going oh, I just wanted it to finish he's like man we got this yes. so yeah it's like having that teamwork there and teamwork's awesome and he said that as well. He said uh, he didn't know how to act and he, he was watching you. And it's like, you know, watching you two watch each other was like you could see that he was really relying off your mentorship and like, I guess, life experience and maturity in, in certain areas or just mind game. Like mm. he's, he's mentally strong and he's awesome. And it, it's cool to see that <clears throat> he actually adopted the lessons that um, – were given over those 48 hours like you said the roles reversed and it's like mm. you know they were interchanging between it. it's like when one dips it's like an opportunity for the other one to go come on then you can't sit down you've got to keep mm. going um so another question that I, I want to ask before we do wrap this up is did you enjoy the just having you two or do you think it would have been dramatically different with a team who was either really like you function well together or conversely didn't function well together like yeah what, what would have that been? um I enjoyed the experience altogether mm. and that was the experience to enjoy so I'm happy with that yeah um team environments make things very different like yeah. if there was more people there um you know you, you've got it's like a footy team like for me it's like you want to put in more for the boys yeah but it's the same just having Tom there too like it's like we've both got this but you know when you've got a team there, it's like if two people are just like, oh, and the third person's like, we'll see us and runs, it's like, oh, I'm going to keep up with you. Now. Yes. Um, whereas, like, if you've got, you know, a whole bunch of people, it's like, oh, and, you know, Clarence is. Oh, yeah. Um, team, team environments, I love that setting. And um, I think, you know, that's probably a big win when it comes to the actual Hell Weeks, Hell, like, Hell Week for the the seals right. having the team there because you know i guarantee everyone's hurting but there'll be those strong mm. the stronger people in that team just going boys like push through push through push through and and people will hold on to that and, and work for that and want to be a part of that um, it makes you work harder was it then really challenging in a way to receive that from sarah and i being in our like obviously one knowing us but then being feminine and then stepping into our masculine in that way, did you feel like there was less of a? Oh man, I had I had brain fights with myself because I was like, I was getting annoyed because we we're just getting smashed, and that was part of it. But that's just the things you go through. Yeah. But um, I remember sitting there fighting with myself. I, I had that moment. I was like, Oh, you guys haven't done this, so stop it. So <laughs> like, but then I was like, I remember like we asked you to do this, and we want you to do this, and this is. Those those mental fights you have with yourself, and that's where you're just like, what's a better one to pick here? What's a better way to handle this myself? You know, so I handle myself better for other people. I love that. Yeah, I do remember having those oh. fights with myself, and it's just like, pull your fucking head in. <laughs> We're all splashing. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was me to me though. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> um so amazing do you have any final messages for our people that are watching listening in terms of like a message that you want to put out there or in terms of like future hell weekends to come like the biggest message is like don't say you can't do anything 
the amount of times people say, oh, I could never do that, or I can't, you know, like, you know, we've had put photos up of us in the ice bath. Yeah. They say, oh, I couldn't do that. It's like bullshit. Well, you can't if you subject yourself exactly, to Exactly, but telling yourself you can't, yeah, it's just push, push yourself. Yeah. Make, like, grow by pushing yourself. So, same as in the gym. If you lift heavier, you're going to get bigger. If you push harder with your mind, it's going to get stronger. If you get mentally tougher, you know, you can do more. Do things that you don't think you can do. And do things that suck every day. <laughs> Just a yes, little bit. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Do things that suck every day. You know, we wake up. The first thing we do in the morning, literally jump, jump out of bed. I pretty much throw my half wet undies on still from yeah. the previous day yeah, and jump 100%. in a two-degree freezer. <laughs> with like, when I say two degree, it's like submerged in water. Yeah. You know, there's ice, ice bloody like chunks Just... <laughs> cut me and stuff because they're still <laughs> sharp. Do shit that sucks because... When it comes to things that you actually have to do that suck, you're just like, well, this isn't that, this is this that bad. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, is that all? Like, yeah. 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 I think that's, a, I think that's probably the one thing I want to convey. And like, yeah, thing, life just seems, pushing myself now is harder to do because things are simple, uh -huh. you know? That's yeah. the comfort life, isn't it? And success is living on the edge of discomfort, I think, or the edge of comfort, whichever. Being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yosh, I, I love chatting to you in general. I love living with you. It's like this. Welcome to our house. Yeah, welcome to our house. <laughs> My house. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a cool way of really, like you said, strengthening bonds, not only just as like, our friendship but between all of us together um the four of us and then getting to spread that to the wider community and um i think it's really special that we're able to not just hang out and be gooses but then also step into that serious mode and, and share this like on an interview or um just sit there and be serious and really talk about what challenges you or um so i, I appreciate your time and energy as always and um, if anybody wants to get in contact with Josh, just to just to speak about it, if it's not something that you want to speak about publicly, it's like I'll pop in his details in the Instagram live notes and also in the podcast notes. So, yeah. And best place for them to get in contact with you would be where, Josh? Both. Both. Facebook, yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. You can actually find me on Facebook now. I always have my... <laughs> profile on private so like you'd search me and I'd never come up and I'm like just find me so, no it's all it's all public now Josh Leaves and then it's Josh Leaves not on Instagram perfect happy days cool Thanks, no worries well we yeah I'm just saying no worries like in advance that you yeah. you've thanked me um yeah awesome tune in for the next episode uh and tune in for the next hell weekend date um I think we might have to go through another little round of an initiation with you and Tom for some things that I, I want to discuss with you. So, Oh yeah, um, for sure. We're going to run that for everybody else. And the big part about that is you should never make people do what you haven't done. Boom. Mic drop. Love it. Peace out legends. Bye.